Voters say that they think they'd be in better financial shape under former President Trump than Vice President Harris. A new Financial Times University of Michigan Ross poll finds 42% of voters think they'd be better off financially if Trump wins in November. 33% think that they would do better under Harris. Meanwhile, this New York Times Santa College poll finding that Harris tops Trump by four points in three of the battleground states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. And a YouGov blue survey finds that Trump and Harris are tied in North Carolina. That is a state that Trump carried in both 2016 and 2020. Joining me now to react, former Arkansas governor, former presidential candidate, and Trump surrogate, Mike Huckabee. And sir, good morning to you. Your reaction to this fresh batch of polls that we have this morning? Not a big surprise, Cheryl. I think the fact that uh, Kamala Harris is riding the wave of the coming to candidate, most importantly, uh, she's getting a free pass from the press. Three weeks, no real press conferences, no serious interviews. So she's not having to go out there and defend Bidenomics, the border, or any of the message that uh, this administration has created. So all she gets to do is to enjoy the tongue bath of the media every single day. They forgive her for not talking to them. They would never forgive anyone on the Republican side. So I don't think it's a big surprise. And I quite frankly think we're going to see uh, uh, maybe an even bigger boost once the Democrat National Convention happens. It'll be well scripted, be a nice production. Uh, they'll put on a good show. And they'll come out of that uh, thinking they've got this made. What Donald Trump has to do is make his case to the American people, not about the personality or the person of Kamala Harris, but about the policies of Biden-Harris and what Tim Walls would bring, which is even a sharper left turn uh, to the country if he were vice president. Well, and we've heard that coming from many, uh, many Republicans saying that the messaging has to be has to be clear that it is about the policy, not the person to try and win those yeah. swing state voters over the ones that you need. Uh, Nevada, Arizona, uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, et cetera, even Georgia, North Carolina. You know, and she's really under fire right now from a lot of her critics for copying uh, former President Trump's no tax on tips proposal. You know, he's been saying this for over two months. Well, she echoed his idea during a Vegas rally over the weekend. Watch. Raise the minimum wage and eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. When I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips. There will be no taxes on tips. No taxes on tips. It's called no tax on tips. No tax on tips. No tax on tips. I'm also doing no tax on tips. No tax on tips. And you know, Governor, I want you to look at the, uh, the New York Post cover from this morning because this is another political move that she is making. They're call her, calling her comma chameleon. Uh, so you know, she's getting called out for all the, the flip-flopping. But she, she's done it again. I mean, she's got, you know, gone back on what the administration had done earlier, which was go after tips and taxing of tips and self-reporting. Yeah, people need to understand that this is just uh, political theater. But let's be honest, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. And she's imitating Donald Trump on this because it's a popular thing. You know, if, if Kamala Harris would imitate all of Trump's policies on the border, the economy, on energy, on inflation, on deregulation and on taxes and on the Middle East and our dealings with foreign uh, enemies like China and Russia, if she would emulate all of those policies, heck, she might be a pretty good candidate. But we know that she doesn't mean a bit of it. She's not sincere. And she's scripted. So this isn't something she's saying from the heart. She's saying from the teleprompter. So I hope people aren't fooled into thinking that Kamala Harris has suddenly become uh, the mini-me of Donald Trump. She hasn't and she won't. Well, and even the Wall Street, uh, excuse me, the Washington Post editorial board says she cannot afford a basement campaign. She can't do what Biden did in 2020.